Hey YouTube, how's it going? Yak Science here with another OCHEM video. Today's topic is going to be dihydroxylation of alkenes. And just like all the other alkene uh, reactions, the name really tells us a lot. Di means two. Hydroxyl, we know, is an OH group. So we're going to be adding two OH groups across a pi bond. And let's just take a look. This is the general scheme. You have an alkene. You're going to react it in a two-step reaction. First is os sorry, osmium tetroxide and THF. And the second step is H2S. And what you end up with is a product that looks like this. Notice dihydroxyl, right? Two hydroxyl groups across the pi bond. So let's just dive in. We're going to see the mechanism. We're going to talk about whether it's regiospecific or stereospecific. And then we're going to do an example. So let's dive in. All right, so here we have an alkene. We have one carbon attached to a methyl. So this is more substituted. Doesn't really matter so much in this case. And we're going to react it first. Remember, the first step was... Uh, osmium tetroxide and THF. Let's go ahead and draw osmium tetroxide. All right, so this is osmium tetroxide. It has a pretty cool uh, structure. It's a central osmium uh, double bonded to four uh, oxygen atoms. So what's going to happen from here? How are these going to interact? Here we go. Nucleophilic pi bond attacks. You can pick any oxygen. I, I like to pick this one when I'm drawing the mechanism. Okay, it's going to attack that guy. Meanwhile, the electrons in this pi bond will shoot over to osmium. And then simultaneously, this pi bond between the osmium and this oxygen will attack the other carbon. Okay. And now that'll give us an intermediate, right, that looks like this. All right, so our intermediate looks like this. You'll notice that each carbon is attached to the oxygens, um, and the osmium is still central. So this is the intermediate. This is not the product. We get to the final product by uh, incorporating the second step of the reaction, which is H2S. Remember that. All right, so this is what our final product looks like after putting it through uh, these two steps. Notice a couple things. First of all, the two hydroxyl groups are thin to each other, right? They are pointing in the same direction. And so in terms of stereospecificity, we can say, yes, this is stereospecific. So let's write yes. And what kind of stereospecificity? It's syn addition. So I'm going to write syn. All right. Now, in terms of regiospecificity, uh, we encountered a similar problem when we talked about halogenation in the previous video. So, technically, anytime you add two of the same kind, so like two hydroxyl groups, there's no way to tell retrospectively what attacked what and, and where. And so, because these are identical and they're both on adjacent carbons, uh, there's no way to tell if it's regiospecific. So, we typically say no. You want to talk with your teacher about it, but technically, uh, Typically, it's taught that it is not regiospecific, so we'll just write no. And one last thing, just technical terminology in case your teacher wants you to be responsible for this. This is called a vicinal diol. Uh, it's called a vicinal diol because uh, you have two hydroxy groups on adjacent carbons. Okay, so that's basically it. So that's dihydroxylation. It's not too bad, uh, and I really hope this made it a little easier to understand.